and welcome to 90 Notes. Today we're going to prove the vertical angles theorem. Our textbook is in the lower left corner, but it doesn't matter you're in high school geometry, this is for you. I'm going to first start by drawing a diagram. I'm going to draw, well, just any line like this, and I'm going to draw an intersecting line. And you probably all know this, but well, generate a bunch of angles. I'm just going to measure or label three of them, one, two, and three. And it doesn't matter if I draw it like this or like this. Try not to draw it like this. You may make some false assumptions. But you know, I don't know. Like that. That's good enough. Here we go. Um, let's clean this up and put in our two-column form. Statements and reasons. Yes, we're going to get ten lines out of this one. I'm going to say that my first line and my proof is the diagram. Say that's my given because that's got everything you need. There you go. Um, well, let's put it to use. I'm going to say angles 1 and 2 are a linear pair. That's the way we say it in my class. And we say, well, why is that? Because the one thing we can assume is collinearity, assumed from the diagram. So, um, well, let's have a, let's see what else we can do with that. You know, if two angles form a linear pair, we have a postulate which says, well, I guess they are supplementary. Those two angles are supplementary because they form a linear pair. Well, two angles that are supplementary, they add up to 180 degrees. How do we know that? Minor P's and Q's, that is a definition. You remember, and we are writing it in our, well, our conditional statement form if two angles are supplementary, then their measures add to 180 degrees. Pretty good so far. Um, let's go to line number five. Well, now I'm going to switch my focus to these two angles, two and three. And, um, well, you, I think you, you can see what we're going to do here. Is say assume from diagram. Hey, that's just like line two, because it is. We assume that from the diagram, same reason, because um, collinearity is something we can assume. Doesn't matter what our drawing looks like, we still have that collinearity. So let's move on. When angles 2 and 3 are supplementary, I could restate postulate 12, or I could just say same as 3. Oh, and by the way, that's only postulate 12 in our book. And, well, well, you know that. That's The number 12 is just for accounting purposes, so we can find it in our textbook. Uh, don't copy that down if you're using a different text. And let's see, line 7. The measure of angle 2 and 3 is 180. That sounds like a definition. If two angles are supplementary, their measures add to 180. Now, let's do something interesting. Take lines 4 and line 7. Now, if 1 and 2 are equal to 180, I can replace the 180 there with the measure of angle 2 and the measure of angle 3. And what I come up with is this statement. The measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. Now, on this one... I'm going to put that I'm going to put that down as substitution. I like that better. I'm some of you are going to say some of you might want to say something like um, transitive. I'd be okay with that, but honestly, this is more clearly a case of substitution. So let's um, take it from here. You probably can see right away. Wait a minute, I got a measure of angle two on both sides of the equation, so I am going to take that away. I'm going to remove that. I am going to subtract. We'll just say that's a subtraction. Um, maybe your text says subtraction property of equality. Regardless, it is a case of subtraction. And finally, I've got two angles with the same measure. If two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. That's a definition. Therefore, angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Those are your vertical angles. That's a really cool proof, because all we needed was this diagram, two crossing lines. Pretty sweet. Now, let's talk just briefly about what a theorem means. Um, and you all know this, your teacher told you, is the whole reason we do this proof. We prove a theorem, and then we replace all of that with this. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. And from this day forward, you're just going to use that. You'll just use this theorem, um, and you'll say from the, I have angle 1 and 3. I have this diagram given. 1 is congruent to 3 because two angles that are vertical are congruent. 
We all know that theorems must be proven, and let's just use this as an example to test the converse. I'm going to draw the, I'll state the converse, vertical angles converse. I'll say if two angles are congruent, then they're vertical. So I'm, again, I'm going to switch the conclusion and the hypothesis. I'm going to reverse the direction. That's the converse. And I'll even draw a diagram, rut row, and right away, well, I messed that up. Um, if you put it like this, it looks good. Six and seven are congruent, but as I've already indicated here, you know, they don't really have to be vertical, do they? So this statement is just plain false. They don't even have to share a vertex for that matter. But this doesn't work. And that means that the converse, you know, it's not there. This theorem works in one direction. Throughout this course, you'll see, um, you'll see theorems that, well, that work in both directions, but it's not going to be this one.